Henderson Hasselbach, take 27. Hi, I'm Mike. This is my cousin Mike. Our other cousin Mike and our other, other cousin Mike couldn't make it, but we are here to describe buffering systems and the Henderson Hasselbach equation for your study needs. Thank you, Mike. As we know, all buffering systems are comprised of a weak acid in an equilibrium with its conjugate base and its uh, protonated ion. We can write that out as our weak acid in equilibrium with a proton and its conjugate and the conjugate base. We further describe that in chemistry, all equilibriums with the letter K. We put a subscript A next to it, and the subscript A makes that our new acid dissociation constant. Any equilibrium we describe as the products over reactants. In this case, hydronium and conjugate base separately from the complete weak acid form. We rearrange that equation a little bit. We get the concentration of hydronium then equals the dissociation constant times the protonated acid over the conjugate base. What if we took the negative log of both sides of that equation? The negative log of proton concentration equals the negative log of our acid dissociation constant minus the log of our ratio of protonated acid to conjugate base. We could further describe a negative log as equaling the letter little p. Therefore, we would have pH equals pKa. Where have I seen those before? Minus the log of the ratio of protonated acid to the conjugate base. Now we've derived the henderson hasselbach equation. All we had to do to make that change was to make this negative sign a positive sign by inverting the ratio of acid to base to now be base to acid. What if we applied that to a problem? Given that we have a polyprotic buffer system, we would set up an ice equation. Hmm. In our problem from question number two in exam one, we had 240 milliliters of 0.5 molar concentrated polypeptide at a pH of four. Let's quantify that. Do a little math, we end up with 120 millimoles of polypeptide. Remember that, 120 millimoles of polypeptide. In our ice equation, we have set up the fully protonated weak acid, its singly deprotonated form, doubly deprotonated, triply deprotonated, and completely deprotonated form. In this expression, each protonated and deprotonated form is described as an equilibrium between an acid and its con relative conjugate base. Each equilibrium has a pKa associated with it. In this particular case, our problem gives us the pKa's 1.2, 3.4, 6.8, and 10.1. Knowing that we are starting in an equilibrium of a pH of 4, we are looking for the most appropriate buffering region in our system of equilibriums. pH of 4 is closest to 3.4. In fact, it's within 1 pH. Therefore, we're going to use this section of our entire system as the equilibrium to be described by the henderson hasselbach equation. Knowing that the henderson hasselbach equation, pH equals pKa plus the log of the ratio of conjugate base to protonated acid, we plug each other our numbers. 4.0, that's what was given to us, equals the pKa, which is this section of our equilibrium, 3.4 plus the log of, now, the conjugate base over the protonated acid ratio. A little bit more math, 0.6 equals the log of our ratio. The, our ratio, therefore, must be 3.98, which is pretty close to 4. So we have a ratio of 4 to 1. If we had 120 millimoles of our peptide, we would therefore have a ratio of 96 millimoles to 24 millimoles of our acid to our base. So let's monkey with that a little further and add some more base to our system to see where our pH is now. That's what the henderson hasselbach equation is useful for. Mike? All right, and this is where I come to play. So at a pH of four, we understand that in our equilibrium system, we have 96 millimoles of H2A, our conjugate base, and 24 millimoles of our protonated acid, H3A. So, 
In the problem, it states that we had 50 milliliters of one molar NaOH. And as we know, that comes out to be 50 moles, 50 millimoles of OH minus as NaOH is a strong base and can lead to the cystics. So, the, the OH minus will firstly like to attack the most specific proton possible, which brings us to the H3A. You mean a base attacks an acid? Oh, yes. Yes, it does. So, with 24 millimoles of the OH minus attacking H3A, that completely eradicates this ionized form, bringing it all to the H2A form, a full 120 millimoles. So, after subtracting up 24 millimoles of OH minus used to eradicate the H3A, it gives us 26 millimoles remaining. Now, we further use this 26 millimoles of OH minus to deprotonate H2A into HA. So, after taking out 26 from 120, it leaves us with 94 millimoles of H2A and 26 millimoles of the deprotonated HA. Gee, Mike, it looks as though our expression has shifted to a new equilibrium further down the ice equation. Oh, yes, and we will need a new PKA to further better describe that new equilibrium system. Fascinating. So, with the new equilibrium system, we have a new PKA that comes with it. 6.8 describing the equilibrium between H2A and HA, which we can further plug into our Henderson Hausbach equation. As seen right here, with a pH equaling 6.8 plus the log of our conjugate base HA and our protonated acid H2A. And with a little bit of monkeying with the calculator, you'll come out to have a pH of 6.24 after adding the base. And that is the crazy Henderson Hasselbach equation as it applies to a modifying buffer system. Thank you.